Red Dead Redemption 2 has been out for an entire year, and I think now is as good a time as any to view this with a fresh light for what the game really is. The original Red Dead Redemption was a near masterpiece. It took everything Rockstar had learned from over a decade of making open world games and applied it to a subgenre that was all but extinct, the western. Gaming has changed pretty significantly since the last time we saw the words Red Dead under new releases. Open world games are now entirely ubiquitous, multiplayer is a giant money pit, and GTA V still never got its single player DLC. Seven years of development, essentially the span of an entire console generation later, and we can finally step back into the boots that Rockstar has made for us. Without question, the most highly anticipated game of 2018, it was almost a foregone conclusion that the game would be immaculate. Well, that's how the hype shaped up. But I think it's important to not just look at whether or not the game is good, which we will, but also the message it sends to the rest of AAA gaming. The Wild West has changed. All too often, you start a game and feel as though you're working your way for an hour, two hours, to a place where you can actually play it. Sure, you may be in control, but a glorified tutorial often does nothing more than lower your expectations for the rest of the game. A feeling I felt with things like Rise of the Tomb Raider despite its visually explosive introduction. But Red Dead 2 is a great example of how to make your intro count. Now, it's worth noting that it does border on a bit too long, but thrusting you into the harsh, mountainous, stormy snow to open the game as you chase down the score of another gang is nothing short of a stroke of genius. Instead of dropping you into a tiny sectioned off portion of the map that looks pretty much like the rest of the map, Red Dead puts you into the dreariest, most desperate environment possible and teaches you the ropes through genuine narrative. It feels a bit like an expansion of GTA V's intro, except they leave you in that snow, in that desolation, for much longer. They force you to accept the reality around you, and immerse yourself in it. This is important because when you do leave that environment and you're out of that intro, that carriage finally touching green, the world in front of you looks all the more beautiful and you can appreciate it so much more with that context in mind. It's almost like the feeling of leaving the vault in Fallout games, albeit a bit less dramatic. What's also important is that it gets a lot right right away outside of that aesthetic change. Everyone wanted to see the same thing coming into the game, so they served the fan service in the first two hours instead of hanging it over your head. And in the process, you get a blockbuster train scene, character development, and mechanical understanding. You never feel that glorified tutorial feel. Red Dead is a great example of just how integral an intro can be to an experience. It should not be overlooked and getting that one person out of the way early was big too, but not nearly as big as the way Rockstar avoids one of the biggest annoyances of modern AAA open games. Map size certainly isn't everything, but Rockstar approaches their world differently. Comparisons are easy. When very little original ideas exist, it's hard not to fall into the trap of looking backwards instead of forward. I don't like the comparisons between Breath of the Wild and Red Dead that so many are making. I understand why they're being made, but there is no question that these are two very different beasts. So let's throw that comparison aside and talk about one of Red Dead's greatest achievements in isolation. Red Dead is proof that genuinely dynamic open worlds are possible when the attention to detail exists across the board. Red Dead 2's moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is good. Shooting mechanics take a bit of getting used to, as typical with Rockstar, but they end up feeling great. Movement can feel a bit clunky, but it's weighty and serviceable as well. Deadeye is still awesome. But there's nothing particularly revolutionary about those mechanics. The dynamism of Red Dead comes elsewhere. First, the realism. Rockstar has crafted one of the most realistic, dynamic worlds gaming has ever seen. Everything is responsive. You can shoot the hat off your enemies, you'll lose your hat and have to find it and pick it back up. Clothes dirty, guns shine. Snow tracks are shot for shot realistic, in harsh winds, trees will blow and sway realistically, water ripples through streams, lighting is superb, the dynamic weather is great. Storms come in, the lightning starts, the mood shifts. There are times playing this game where you genuinely feel bad for the guy that had to spend years figuring out how to handle the snow physics because it's so impressive you know it had to be incredibly difficult. It's also so lived in. 
towns are built with realism in mind, interiors are fully explored with every corner holding a new detail you'll regret missing, you'll run into strangers in the woods who need help, who have a story to explore, dogs who you can actually get to stop barking through a simple pet, you'll go fishing, play dominoes, games that by the way, outcomes will be talked about by the people you play for days on end. But the return of the honor system maybe best displays the power of this dynamic world. Arthur's honor will affect his dreams, even his journaling. Accidentally kill someone in a fight due to a control mishap, and townspeople will remember and talk about it. They will treat you differently, the bounty will be placed, and the world will seem as though it's made you its sole enemy. To pay the bounty or not, a more realistic mechanic, and Rockstar asks you to genuinely live in this moment and in that mechanic. As simple as it is. And this is where Red Dead's world building begins to be hit or miss. That live in the moment attitude. The temperature matters. You can get too hot or too cold. You'll need to eat. It helps to sleep, as does cooking, eating, and well, you get the idea. Part of this open world charm is surviving in it as you'd expect to in real life. Now, these mechanics, like cleaning your gun, can indeed feel like chores, they can slow down the pace, and sometimes they indeed do, but they also make you appreciate that world all the more and don't feel too intrusive to keep up with should you choose to. But it does make things like hunting a vital tool, foraging, the things that are often tacked on collectibles in games, now serve true mechanical purpose. And by slowing you down, these mechanics allow you to see more of pretty much everything, so it's really hard to look at them as a bad thing, and instead as something that make for a great addition to the game. Unfortunately, making all this possible isn't quite as easy as most would like it to be. Go to McDonald's and order a Big Mac and fries, eat it. What if you could hold the feeling of eating it for 60 hours and not deal with any of the health problems and potential stomach aches that come later? That was GTA 5 at launch. That is, again, Red Dead 2 at launch as well. Red Dead 2 shows that you can launch a game, the very best of it, by itself with no nonsense and it can still thrive, a point the rest of the gaming industry needs to see and understand. Red Dead Online is still an unknown quantity. Red Dead 2 launched without a full or robust online mode. What I mean is Red Dead Online is a supplementary factor for the actual package of Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, obviously, the focus for Rockstar shifted once the game launched. And Red Dead Online from beta on has been both great and terrible all at the same time and will continue to be one of those two things in the future. By launching Red Dead 2 this way, it allowed people to experience the meat of the game with no distractions. It allows people to have the Red Dead experience, which is great, in isolation. If you treat online like a supplement to your single player experience, the single player experience will almost always benefit from that attitude. If you treat multiplayer as more important, well, we know what happens then. Look, we know the facts. We know that Red Dead's publisher has stated that they want every game from GTA 5 on to have microtransactions. We know that GTA Online had brought in over a billion dollars by June 2017. We know it'd be naive to expect that Red Dead Online will be without some of the predatory nature of GTA Online. But if your base game doesn't suffer, if you don't treat the online as the meat of the package, which Rockstar certainly has not done here, then what you do is change the consumer attitude towards that product as a whole. But it shows that there are methods of outwardly prioritizing what matters most to a very large chunk of gamers, and it will have a positive impact on the game. And then there are the things that a lot of people like to say don't matter to them, but in reality when they're absent, we notice. The next point Red Dead makes is when we don't always like to admit matters. Look. Let's be real, gameplay is king, it always has been, it always will be, but there is absolutely no question that the beauty of a game can change the way you interact with it. And if a game makes you feel as though you truly are interacting with it, well that's even better. Red Dead 2 wants to tell the world that looks and physics, well, they matter. What do I mean when I say that a game's aesthetics can change the way you interact with it? Red Dead 2 on any system is gorgeous, but Red Dead 2 on an Xbox One X may be the most impressive graphical feat this generation. The game often encourages a slow pace, as already mentioned. 
Part of what keeps that from becoming grating is the fact that nearly every environment is gorgeous and detailed. This makes existing in it a pleasure. Better yet, with an added emphasis on exploring that reaches further into the RPG pot, with mechanics that ask you to loot and scavenge and find and see everything you can, that aesthetic immersion becomes even more important and you're encouraged to engage with those systems as a result. Most of the time, you don't mind spending the extra couple of seconds looting a body or searching a room because you don't mind the view. Essentially, the prettier the rainbow, the more likely you are to go search for the pot of gold at the end of it. But it isn't just the looks that support that immersion. Surprisingly, it's the physics system that's almost immediately impressive. Before release, there was a lot of talk of the Euphoria engine being used to enhance physics-based reactions, and the talk was justified. Watching an enemy slump over a horse, watching an animal fall to the ground, placing a deer over your shoulders, the game's physics engine is incredibly impressive, even if a bit inconsistent. There's a weight to this world that is nearly unmatched by any other modern open world game and it absolutely adds to the immersion of that world. It feels grounded in the same physical rules of your reality. When things react the way you expect them to, it's easier to give in to the existence of what's in front of you. It is worth mentioning though what was just alluded to. Every once in a while, that engine doesn't respond quite as well as it should, but those times are, at least in my experience, few and far between. It's just to say that the engine isn't without all fault. Red Dead 2 is a great example of how much the looks and physics of your world can mean to the qualitative experience of the people picking up a controller to engage with it. Now this isn't to say that we should want or expect developers to have an increased focus here over gameplay, but it is to say that when it's gifted to us, it's worth appreciating. But when it comes to statements, it's not all sunshine and roses with Red Dead 2. <laughs> One of the ways that Red Dead 2 will likely mark a shift in gaming, one of the points that it's made is one of the very few negatives surrounding the game, and that's more about how games are made. Removing employees who don't finish the game from the credits, making overtime feel like a requirement, 100 hour work weeks for writing staff, years of crunch. These are the reported realities of Red Dead Redemption 2's development cycle. This is quite possibly the highest profile development studio on the planet. This, more likely than not, is just another dev cycle in the line of precedent the medium has set for decades. The reports pouring out across the web after comments from studio head Dan Hauser about the necessity of massive workloads and higher than usual work hours, about the questionable development conditions of the studio in this process. After seven years of development in a studio hyper-focused on detail and quality, it's almost unsurprising, however unfortunate, to hear that some of the people that made the game may not have gotten the better of the experience. While we don't know the true extent of the working environment at Rockstar, what we do know is that this was a very real strain in the studio in order to get this done, and this should have an impact on the medium as a whole. It should change the way some of these publishers and developers treat their employees. Now, whether it does or not is another story. Whether it sparks a shift in how AAA devs make their games, whether the conversation is loud enough surrounding Red Dead to have that impact, it's really anybody's guess. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of those incredibly rare products that live up to years of incredible hype and remarkably finds a way to surpass those expectations. Now, Red Dead Redemption 2 isn't perfect, I think it goes without saying that nothing is, but it gets as close as a game could possibly get to that very reality. And while we have no idea what the quality of Red Dead Online will be long term, even short term, what I do know is that the package in front of us now is more than enough to justify a $60 purchase. But I think what will be most interesting is the kind of impact that the game will have on gaming in its entirety. Is this the generational product that shifts a medium the way that something like San Andreas did? Or is it just another great game that the medium will brush aside in their pursuit to get something of quality out for that quicker dollar? In almost every way, I hope it's the former and not the latter, because in my time as a cowboy, the one thing I've learned is that being great takes time. To appreciate something, you have to take it slow, and you have to learn from your mistakes. But seriously, can we just get Undead Nightmare 2? Well guys, that is it for today's video. I do want to mention something really quickly. Red Dead's launch on PC has been borderline disastrous. It has not gone well in any way, shape, or form. 
So many things have gone wrong, from the game not launching, from the game being filled with bugs, from menus not working. For me, even the pause screen glitches and flickers and does not work as it should. It's been a total mess. I did not, I want to make it clear, view Red Dead Redemption 2 through the lens of its PC release for this particular video. I may cover that if it doesn't get fixed in the future, but I do want to point out now that if you're considering getting this game on PC, I would be very weary of doing so because it has been nothing short of a total and complete mess thus far. However, with all that being said, now I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of what Red Dead Redemption 2 is? Are you one of the people that think the game simply is not that fun? Are you one of the people that think that it gets far too realistic far too often? Or do you think it's a masterpiece? Or are you somewhere in between all of those things? And I think more importantly, the thing I want to know more than anything else is very simple. Do you want Red Dead Redemption 2 single player DLC, or would you rather Rockstar push their focus to GTA 6 and get that game out 3 to 6 months faster? Let me know the answers to any of those questions down in the comments below. Let's have a real conversation as always. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button. If you have not yet done so, press subscribe as well. That way you won't miss anything I put up on this channel. Also, and I say this in every video, it's really important. Next to the subscribe button is a little bell grayed out. If you press that little bell, all it does is just make sure that you're notified when I upload a video. That's it. All pressing that bell does is make sure you actually get the videos when they come out. So press subscribe and that little bell. And until next time, guys, I'm out.